Hey guys, Blake here with another video and I was just at my local Bunnings and I thought why not continue the series and let's talk about 10 items you can find for your fish room at Bunnings. Let's jump straight into the video. Alright, so um, for those of you that don't live in Australia, a Bunnings is kind of like a hardware store, so similar to your Lowe's I think. Um, but yeah, pretty much it has a gardening section, a hardware section, plumbing section, and all those sort of hardware store things that you can expect. So the first one I wanted to talk about that you can get at Bunnings is of course one that's super popular here. You can probably even see some right here behind me. We've got some Devil's Ivy or some Pothos. Really, really handy thing that you can grow out at the top of your aquarium and it's going to be a great uh, sponge for all those nitrates, things like that. You can also get different variants and things like that so you can tailor it towards what you think looks the best and there are plenty of other plants that will also do a similar job at the top of your aquarium. For example, I keep some Boston Ivy and some other plants as well. Um, get creative with it and yeah, you can certainly get plants to grow above your aquarium. If you know my channel, you can probably anticipate the next one as well. And that is a really cheap uh, item that works well as a cave, as a planter, and there's many, many other things you can do with it. And that is terracotta pots. Uh, ordinary terracotta, so long as there's no sort of paints or glazes on it, is totally aquarium safe. It will make the reds really pop on your fish as well with that deep uh, terracotta tone. And uh, you just can get a lot more economical with the use of aqua soil and things like that. So I, I do a lot of planting in terracotta pots. Um, another great thing is that whilst the plant is growing, you're also growing that good bacteria that we look for in the nitrogen cycle. So if you want to kickstart a new aquarium, you can easily pull out a couple of terracotta pots, put them in your new aquarium, and you'll have some established plants, some bacteria, and you're pretty much ready to go. So um, terracotta pots are super handy. I've talked about them a lot, so um, I'm sure there's plenty of videos on the channel if you want to learn more about what you can do with terracotta pots. Another thing that I get at Bunnings is actually gravel. So they sell uh, sort of natural river gravel a lot cheaper than at an aquarium store. You can even get it even more cheaper at um, sort of sand and soil uh, quarries and things like that. But if you want to just go and pick up a bag fairly cheaply and fairly readily, uh, you can go to Bunnings and pick up some nice natural river gravel. It is worth noting that you're going to want to rinse it out before you use it because it does have a fair bit of sort of muddy, sandy, silty sort of uh, material in it as well. So quick rinse out and you're good to go. Chuck it in your aquarium. Along that same vein and in the same area, you can get some really cheap and effective biological media in the form of scoria. So scoria is a volcanic rock, um, but once again, you're gonna wanna rinse it pretty thoroughly or you'll have a nice red, uh, dusty aquarium. So once you do, uh, the scoria has heaps of little crevices and holes which make for uh, great surface area for that bacteria to grow on. So um, if you ever want to just fill up your canister filters really cheaply, then Scoria can be the way to go. Another one that I get from Bunnings, um, and I'm actually using pretty much on all of these racks here, are floodlights. The ones that I choose to use and the ones that I recommend to people wanting to do this are the Arlec ones. I found them to be pretty good. Generally, say for a tank about this size, which is about 75, 80 centimeters, I'd go with a 30 watt. And then I've got two um, 20 watts on the three foot tanks. But um, there's not that much adjustability, but I think that can be a really cheap way to light multiple tanks if you got them on a rack or something like that. Um, as well as that, if you want to pay the little bit extra money, I think for $40, you can get a 20 watt floodlight, but it's a smart one, so you can have that adjustability. It's got an inbuilt timer and all that sort of good stuff. So check out floodlights. It's a great way to get light all the way down to the bottom of a deeper aquarium. And um, yeah, for the most part, they come on the daylight spectrum. So um, generally, I found them to be pretty good. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it grows plants pretty well. I think it's always handy to have silicon on hand just in case you have a tank that springs a leak or you get a tank that needs a reseal or something like that. The one that you can get from Bunnings that is 100% aquarium safe is Sally's glass. You just want to make sure that there's no mold inhibitors and other um, chemicals that people put into silicon to help around the bathrooms and things like that. But they're things that we don't want in our aquarium. So we just want 100% silicon and the one that we're going to look for at Bunnings is Sally's glass. So a fairly simple one, 
and uh, always good to have on hand is a bit of silicon. Another great thing that you can get from Bunnings is some paint. So you can get both acrylic paint and spray paint from Bunnings so you can do your um, aquarium backgrounds. I didn't choose to put blue on this one. I'd probably tend to lean uh, more towards the black backgrounds myself. But uh, yeah, you can easily get spray paint and acrylic paint from Bunnings. Uh, I didn't see it this time, but usually I like to get a uh, Plasti Dip, which is sort of a uh, plastic spray paint that you can actually peel off after the fact. And I'm using that in some aquariums, so I'm also confident in suggesting that you can paint uh, things within the aquarium with Plasti Dip and uh, have it nice and safe. Like if you did a DIY spray bar or um, canister filter intake, then you could paint it black using that and uh, you'd have no dramas. For me, I built those um, heater covers out of PVC and uh, yeah, had a fair bit of success there. So um, spray paint and acrylic paint you can get at your Bunnings too. Another really great one is this uh, twin wall or core flute. Um, it's in the greenhouse section. People use it for greenhouse panels. But the good thing for, to use in your aquarium is for uh, cheap and effective aquarium lids. So, I mean, when you have this many aquariums, you, you're bound to break a lid here or there. So those twin walls work really well because they're super sturdy, pretty much um, unbreakable and uh, really cheap and easy to cut up for use of your lids. So I've certainly bought my fair share of uh, twin wall sheets and the good thing is they do come in giant sheets but they also come in more manageable sheets if you only need one lid here or there so um, you don't have to organize a big trailer to go and pick it up. You can get sheets that fit just in a normal car which is pretty handy too. And last but not least uh, you can buy the gym, uh, gym mat floor tiles whatever you want to call them the EVA foam tiles and I use them underneath all my aquariums so I just find it to be a lot less messy and easier to handle than cutting up styrofoam. You don't get those little balls of styrofoam everywhere when you cut it up and um, yeah I've found them to be really effective so all my tanks have these EVA foam mats underneath them and um, touch wood we haven't had any uh, bad luck yet so um, they're really cheap. I think you get four tiles for ten dollars or something like that. And yeah, once again, I've bought plenty of them and I've used them under every single tank that I have. So um, worth checking out. And um, yeah, I can stand by that. So I've had good success with that. So those are my top ten. Uh, I think there's plenty of honourable mentions, and you can certainly get creative at Bunnings. I know I've done a few laps around Bunnings before. Um, just looking for ideas. So there's plenty of things you can do uh, in the hose section, in the gardening section, and also in the PVC section. So you can create air manifolds and plenty of stuff like that. PVC for your air loop. I mean, there's plenty of things that you can do with PVC. So let me know down below if you've got some more creative ideas. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be really interesting to really interested to hear. One thing that I would steer clear of that people always pick up at Bunnings is the play sand. I just find it's really fine and doesn't really work that well in an aquarium setting. So that's my experience. Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there who has play sand and absolutely loves it, but I just can't recommend it um, as far as this channel goes. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it provided some inspiration. If it did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.